goal for this video is zero voice cracks. Let's see if we can do it. <laughs> Moisture and protein. It's like peanut butter and jelly, wine and cheese, yin and yang. Healthy hair has a perfect balance of both of these things that live in harmony together with one another happily ever after. But how do you know if you need one or the other or which one? Let's get into it. What's up guys, Trav White here. Welcome back to the channel where we cover the science of hair, the science of grooming and style. And I recently had someone in my Facebook group, Mannered Mains, which you should come join by the way if you're growing out your hair or your beard. But anyways, I had a guy ask about using a protein mask because his hair was dry or damaged. And I thought this would be a really good video topic to discuss because I was wondering when he asked it, I was like, well, if you have dry hair, is protein really what you need or is it moisture? So in this video, we're gonna cover number one, what is protein moisture balance and why should you care? Number two, which hair types are more prone to needing which ones? Number three, the at home easy test to figure out if you need protein or moisture. Number four, what ingredients to look for in your hair care products. And number five, how to have a hair care routine that keeps the perfect balance of both no matter what your hair type is. So. What is protein moisture balance and why should you care? Number one, when you work out, you know, you exercise, you lift weights, your body, it needs a healthy balance of hydration to regulate your body temperature and deliver nutrients to your cells. And it needs protein to repair, <clears throat> voice crack number one, and it needs protein to repair broken down muscle. So your body needs hydration and it needs strength. Your hair is very similar. An easy way to remember protein moisture balance is moisture is the hydration and protein is the strength. So let's start with protein. The majority of your hair is made up of keratin. Actually more specifically, it's this type of keratin called K31 type one acidic keratin, which is the protein found in your cortex and how much you have fluctuates kind of day to day. So hair with plenty of protein has volume. And if you have curly hair, your curls are nice and strong and bouncy, but you do lose protein during your day to day activities. And this is totally normal. But one thing that causes hair to lose protein is simply wetting it too often. Have you ever seen a dry sponge? You know, what happens when, when you wet it? It absorbs water and it swells up. The same thing happens to hair. When you wet your hair, your cortex swells up. And this happens whether it's hot water or cold water, but the cortex swells up, your cuticle scales raise, and each time you wet your hair, you do end up losing a teeny tiny bit of protein. And if this happens over and over and over for too long, it can lead to an oversaturation of moisture. It can lead to high growth fatigue, which is basically weak hair from protein loss. You also lose protein if you have too harsh of a surfactant in your shampoo and sulfates are the main cause of this. So several studies have shown that sulfates like sodium lauryl sulfate, sodium laureth sulfate, and ammonium lauryl sulfate not only bind to the dirt and the oil in your hair, but they also bind to some of the keratin. And when you rinse your hair out, it brings some of the protein with it. So sulfates, good for your laundry detergent, not the best thing for your hair unless you're doing a clarifying wash or or you need something strong to remove the grease and build up. But I typically suggest going for a sulfate-free shampoo. Also, when you use too hot of heat tools, this leads to cuticle damage, and this can cause moisture and protein to escape as well. So it's easy to see how over time, your hair can get really weak if you're not feeding it the nutrients it needs. Just like how you eat protein to build muscle, you should incorporate protein-based products to keep your hair strong. That brings us to moisture. If your hair is too dry and brittle, then it's gonna break much more often. It's really unruly, it's frizzy, it's unmanageable. And well hydrated hair is shiny and it's conditioned and it's really soft. So imagine the perfect combination of strength and hydration, right? You have no frizz, no dullness, no weak curls, but instead it's hydrated and it's frizz free and it's bouncy and it's full of volume. This is why getting the protein moisture balance right is really important and why you should care. So this brings us to point number two, which is which hair types need what, right? Your hair is naturally predisposed to needing one thing or the other based on your hair type. So if you don't have my hair type PDF, you can download it for free. I'll link to it in the description. But if you do have it, then for the sake of this video, you can ignore the sections on curl pattern, density, scalp moisture levels. They're not 
super important here. The two traits that will affect kind of what you're predisposed to for protein and moisture are your texture and your porosity. Hair texture is the diameter of one individual strand of hair and it will determine how much protein your hair typically holds onto normally. And if you have fine hair like I do, then your cortex is much thinner in diameter and you tend to hold less protein. If you have coarse hair like our fellow YouTuber Thomas in Action, your cortex is a little thicker in diameter and you tend to hold onto a little bit more protein. And porosity will determine how well your hair holds onto and retains moisture. If you have low porosity hair, your cuticle scales are really tight and moisture is difficult to absorb. But when you do absorb it, you hold on to it and you hold on to protein really, really well. So low porosity hair doesn't need too much protein or moisture too often because there's not much to repair. Your hair is actually really healthy. So low porosity hair equals low doses of both. Medium porosity hair absorbs and retains moisture really, really well because it has loose enough of a cuticle to absorb moisture, but still tight enough to hold onto that moisture and protein really, really well. I have medium porosity hair. If you have medium porosity hair, then the hair gods blessed us. Thank you, hair gods. But I'm not gonna brag about it. We still do need protein and moisture in a moderate dosage, right? I definitely need more protein because I have fine textured hair. So I would say medium porosity equals moderate amount of doses. And if you have high porosity hair, you absorb moisture easily, but you also lose moisture easily because your cuticles have gaps, they have holes, they're damaged from things like heat tools or coloring your hair or even high growth fatigue. There could be tons of reasons that you have high porosity and it could be genetic as well, but you need both protein and moisture in high, high dosages. So high porosity equals high doses. So now let's move on to the easy at home test to determine if your hair needs protein or moisture and which one. And this is the hair elasticity test. And this is where you take one individual strand of hair and you pull on it. If you pull on it and it bounces back really well, like a rubber band, then this is good. You have a good balance of protein and moisture and you probably don't need like high doses of one or the other. Whatever you're doing, keep doing that, it's working. Now, if you pull on it and it doesn't really stretch at all or it breaks kind of instantly, then your hair's dry and it needs moisture. You might have protein overload as well. And if you pull on it and it keeps on going and going and going and going and going and going, then you have too much moisture and not enough protein. Your hair won't hold its shape. It's pretty dull and weak and you need more protein in your products. And a common term for this is moisture overload or high growth fatigue. And your hair can feel really gummy, like too much moisture and not enough strength. Okay, cool, so now that you know whether you need protein or moisture, what products should you be using to get a good balance of both? Well, I would say the first place to start is obviously with what you ingest, it's your diet. Healthy hair grows from the roots, and if you eat plenty of protein and you drink plenty of water, those nutrients will get delivered to your roots through your bloodstream, and the hair that comes out that will grow will come out strong and hydrated. But of course, the longer your hair gets, the more damage can occur as your hair starts to grow away from your roots, the more that your day-to-day -day activities can cause you to lose those nutrients, whether it's protein or moisture. So that's where topical products can really help. And there's two classes of protein-containing products. The first is the protein treatment products. These are products with a very high percentage of protein in them, and these are specifically designed to repair damaged hair. So these are masks or keratin treatments. So who should use these? I would say not everyone actually needs this. This is for severely damaged hair, and hair that's been heavily chemically treated or damaged from bleaching would probably fall into this camp. I actually read a study that showed that too much bleaching and chemical treatment does lead to keratin loss in your hair. But if this isn't you, I'd say save your money and go for the second class of protein products. And these are just your shampoos, conditioners, leave-ins, styling creams, and gels, etc., that have proteins in them. And it's one of the ingredients. So you probably don't need protein in every single product that you have to get a good balance. You just need it in probably your shampoo and your conditioner most likely. So I wouldn't go out and buy 10 products with protein if your hair has like a moisture overload. So when shopping for products with protein in them, what are some things you should be looking for in terms of what to buy? Well, if you look at some of the fancy words and branding that companies put on the front of their products, then products that allude to having proteins in them will say things like strengthening, volumizing, 
repairing, nourishing. But honestly, I don't read any of that stuff. I skip over the marketing gimmicks and I go straight to the back to the ingredients list. I don't care what the brand is trying to tell me to get me to buy their product. I just wanna know what the formula is. Because if I see a shampoo that markets strength and volume on the front, but on the back I turn it around and the first ingredient is sodium lauryl sulfate, and then the 24th ingredient on the very bottom is hydrolyzed wheat protein, I would say that it's more protein stripping than protein repairing, right? It's not as repairing as the pretty marking label on the front would say. So I'd rather see a shampoo with a gentler surfactant and protein as the fourth or fifth ingredient. So keep that in mind when you're shopping for your products. But here's a list to make sure your shampoo and conditioner has protein in them, and I'll bring them up on the screen right here. So I will also leave a list of these shampoos and conditioners that I think are really good with protein in the description, and I'll do that for moisturizing products as well. But sometimes it's really straightforward, and it says something like wheat protein, or collagen, or keratin, et cetera, et cetera. But oftentimes it's labeled as like something that's hydrolyzed because that's how your hair absorbs it, or cocoil hydrolyzed, or something like that. But if it says protein, there's protein. It could also say things like amino acid, it could say collagen, or it could say keratin, it could say silk protein, it could say rice protein, milk protein. These are all different protein ingredients that you can find in products that you're shopping for. Cool, so let's move on to moisturizing products that you wanna look for. And again, if this is your hair is dry and it has poor elasticity, you're gonna want these products. Again, you're gonna see marketing words like hydrating, deep conditioning, softening, but we don't care about the marketing, right? Remember, we are going straight to the back, straight to the ingredients list. We wanna look for three things. We wanna look for humectants, emollients, and cationic surfactants. So humectants, they're part of the formula that help retain moisture in the hair. I believe glycerin is a really common one. Emollients, create barriers that prevent moisture from escaping. And these are usually things like butters or oils or creams, so shea butter, coconut oil, or long chain alcohols like cetyl alcohol or ceteryl alcohol. These function as emollients. And next we have the cationic surfactants, which if you haven't seen my surfactant edition of what's actually in your shampoo and conditioner, I break down each type of surfactant and why it's included, but for a really quick summary, Cationic surfactants contain a positive ionic charge on the water soluble end and your hair having a negative charge functions like a magnet. So these are really good conditioning agents. They stick to your hair. They lock in the oils and the water to keep your hair hydrated. Here's a quick list of humectants, emollients, and cationic surfactants that will moisturize your hair. So you might be sitting there wondering if silicones should be on this list. Are silicones moisturizing? So all silicones are, are a synthetic way to add slip and shine to your hair. They don't actually absorb into your hair shaft and moisturize your hair. They sit on the outside. But here's where they can potentially help. So they will lock out humidity, which causes frizz, and they will function similarly to an emollient and lock in products that do moisturize your hair. So they're a really good sealant. I would just be careful because silicones can build up on your hair over time and you'll have to do a clarifying wash, maybe even with a SLS shampoo to clear them off your hair. They can stick to your hair really tightly and sometimes these gentle surfactants aren't strong enough to wash them away. But they don't technically damage your hair. They actually add shine and protect and lock in moisture they just build up and you gotta wash them off. But I do prefer butters and oils as emollients instead of silicones. And the reason is I found this study out of the Journal of Trichology in 2015 that showed hair oils penetrated the hair shaft really, really well, filling in the gaps between the cuticles and preventing the cortex from swelling too much from water, which is a great way to prevent high growth fatigue, AKA moisture overload. And they provide another barrier to protect your hair proteins from aggressive surfactants from penetrating your hair follicle and stripping your proteins away. So this is why I use coconut oil as a pre-wash and as a post-wash because another study out of 2003 in the Journal of Cosmetic Science found coconut oil was the only oil that reduced protein loss remarkably for both damaged and undamaged hair when used pre and post wash. So use pre-oil and protect your hair from protein loss. So now that we know what our hair needs and we know what ingredients to look out for, let's move on to part four of this video, 
what is your routine? So it really comes down to wash day and it comes down to what your hair needs on that specific day. So when that day comes, do the elasticity test. If you're over moisturized, use a protein-based shampoo and conditioner. If you're dry and brittle, use a more moisturizing, protein-free shampoo and conditioner. And if you're balanced, then just do what you've been doing. Whatever you're doing is working, right? For me, I use a protein-based shampoo and conditioner every five to seven days because I have medium porosity and fine textured hair. So I do want to add some protein back to my hair every week. And if you have low porosity, coarse textured hair, obviously check what your hair needs with the elasticity test. And if you have good elasticity, you probably should use a protein-free product to to avoid protein overload just because your hair holds on to protein really well. If you have high porosity hair, whether it's coarse or fine, you probably want to use a protein-based shampoo and conditioner each time you wash and also do a post-wash LOC method, which is a great way to heal high porosity hair. So that's the leave-in conditioner plus the oil and then layer that with a cream. And it would help if your cream that you used had protein in it as well. If you have curly hair, you might use multiple products on wash day. You might use a shampoo, a conditioner, a leave-in, a styling cream. You don't need protein in all those products. You probably only need them in your shampoo or conditioner, and the rest should be protein-free to avoid using too much protein in all your products. But the important thing to remember here is to have a great balance of both protein and moisture, and you can use the elasticity test to tell which one you need. And guys, that's all I have for you in today's video. I'm gonna leave products in the description for awesome protein-based products and awesome moisturizing products. So you can go shop around and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Uh, hair fall. Oh no. Oh no. Mm. So let's say you are moisture. Oh my gosh, I can't talk right now.